We're gonna play some praise music today. Oh man. This is Carrie's favorite song. He is my favorite. Let's give us a second while we get people. We're going to share this post. Carrie's like favorite jam praise song. I always like the super serious songs, but uh, Carrie gets us rooming. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. How is everybody doing? You should have kept it going. Let people oh. jump on. You want? My mom's on here. Hey, mom. <laughs> It was my mom last night. It's always our moms. We love our moms. All right. Mom, did you uh, did you set up your alarm clock to wake up in Alabama time? It's 11 o'clock over there. Did you get a nap in? All right, awesome. Well, welcome to day two, guys. We're excited to uh, jump into a couple of things with Passion Week. Let me get this off here. Mom said yes. Mom said her mom. She got a nap in and everything. She got a nap. Hey, Lindsay. <laughs> she got to watch today. Yay! I know she's been working, so she hasn't been able to. Lindsay, I'm so glad that you were able to join tonight. Awesome. Well, hey, so we started this Passion Week live stream yesterday. Uh, it was day one. Today is day two. And we're going all the way until Saturday night, um, which is the night before Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. And so there's all kinds of really cool, significant events that lead up to the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, so Karen, I thought we would just... Change the setting to start out. We're going to sit on our couch here. I'm sporting my Alabama football hat. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Um, uh, I became a Tuscaloosa, Alabama football fan. I Thanks. see you, Lindsay. Hey, Stephanie. That's awesome. Um, and so we wanted to, uh, we're going to talk through a couple of really key things that Jesus did on this day. Yesterday, we talked about the triumphal entry, and we're going to go through some of those pieces and uh, my wife is going to share a couple things tonight as well, All right, babe? Mm -hmm. I'm always up for sharing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to talk. 72 hours, Lindsay, that you worked this week. Oh my gosh. Holy moly. Wow. Thank you for just everything you're doing, Lindsay. Oh my yeah, gosh. That's huge. We don't even know what that's like right now. It's crazy. Wow. I like seeing everybody and saying hi. We've missed you guys. Yeah, we have. So much. Like, legit like we, missed you guys. Yeah. Like, like we I mentioned hug in you our, guys' neck. We mentioned in our first video, um, you know, we were supposed to launch Multiply Church last weekend. Don died. That was for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don died. That's my friend. I'm not even going to try. That's my friend. I can't even do it. Um, he knows. So anyways, we were supposed to launch Multiply Church last week or a week from last Sunday. And um, it's just neat because now we can do these Facebook Live events, interact with people, and just really uh, see people get on. So I have a couple questions. Uh, hey, Leah. I see you, girl. You're like the hardest person to hum in. <laughs> so hard. I'm trying to get serious here. He's trying, I'm trying to, be to like, serious. I'm like, hey, guys. I mean, I've got my big, can massive Bible. Tell? I'm ready to preach. <laughs> can you tell me this is Carrie's so like, butterflies. squirrel. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Jeez. Can we sorry. focus? I'm sorry, yes. Gosh. 
I'm ready. Oh man. All right, so <laughs> so we're gonna ask a couple questions. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna talk about Jesus. We'll start with the easy one. Um, so I'm gonna ask you since it'll be harder to interact with people. So Jesus uh, had no sin, correct? Yes. So that's, I've always wondered that's this. That's the way I understand it. <laughs> that's the way I understand. It. So I've always wondered this. Uh, was Jesus subject to death? Since the wages of sin is death, and Jesus had no sin, would Jesus? Have... I don't think that he was. I kind of tend to agree. I'm curious as well. I don't think that I don't think that he was. If he had no sin, yep. sin is what brought about death, right? Mm -hmm. So. And he wasn't born with the Adamic, the Adam uh, sin nature That's because right. his biological father was God. God. So Which then is so crazy I would to say think no. About. Joseph was his stepdad. Isn't that weird? So all the broken families, they can relate. Like yes. Joseph was his stepdad. And all his half, half brothers and yeah, half yeah. sisters. Anyways. Yeah, they, yeah. That's interesting. David comes up with these questions sometimes, you guys. Like, did Adam, from Adam and Eve, did Adam have a belly button? Like that. I don't... I, I, That's what I'm talking about. He does. He didn't. Every day. Did Adam have a belly button? I wake up. And Dave, I come. Here's another one. And David's like, hey, um, do you think that um, Adam I just had a belly button? I'm like, I'm sorry. I haven't even had coffee yet. So. Here's another one. What Adam was designed to live forever. <laughs> so could Adam like not drown? Like what if Adam was underwater in the Garden of Gethsemane? Would he never drown? Adam? Adam. No. Adam, like he could just stay in the water forever. Because like none of a those merman. because none of those things were supposed to happen. That was never in the original plan of God when he created What man, if he right? fell off a cliff and fell five hundred feet and hit the ground? Bounce. Just, <laughs> I don't know. Bounce. That's what I think. I think he would just bounce. That's so funny. All right guys, hey, we're gonna jump right into a couple things. Hey of Maya, I see you girl. And then we're gonna actually end Hi, Lisa. We're gonna to end today's sessions. Yesterday we went pretty long. We went like 40 minutes, and we're gonna to try to keep it at like 25 minutes. So we're gonna do a song at the end. We're gonna talk real quick. So if you have your Bibles, bust them out. We're gonna do a little church late at night. Yes. On Sunday nights is what we often call Palm Sunday during Passion Week. Um, open up to the Gospel of Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Gospel of Mark, chapter 11. And as I mentioned last night, all four Gospels tell the story of Jesus having his triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. Yeah. And in the Gospel of Mark, it's interesting because where we left off in Mark 11, 11, mm -hmm. it says that Jesus entered Jerusalem. He went to the temple on the Temple Mount and he looked around. He saw everything. Yeah. And since it was already late, because Jesus entered first at, in the evening, and since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12 mm -hmm. and he spent the night. The 12 disciples. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he went back and then the next day he came back into the city of Jerusalem with his disciples. Now what I'm not sure, maybe other scholars can help me on this. I don't know if the triumphal entry was on that first entry into Jerusalem or on the second, the second one the one. next day. I tend to think it might be the second one. I'm not sure. Um, so what we're going to carry into is starting in verse 12. Mm -hmm. Mark 11, it says the next day. So Jesus got a good night's rest. And apparently Mary, he's staying at Mary and Martha's house. Remember, Lazarus is the brother of Mary and Martha. Martha was the one that was busy, always serving. Yeah. And I guess Mary didn't feed all the guys. Can you imagine having 12 guys and Jesus stay at your house? Just like no. on, on the cuff, trying to host that. My two boys eat me out of house and home, and that's two, and they're nine and six. Y'all, we cannot keep milk in the fridge. Our boys pour cereal Seriously. like like this, and then <laughs> it just like, spills guys. all over. Can you imagine 12 grown men staying in your home? So the Bible says here that Jesus was hungry. I love this. Uh, verse 12, Jesus was hungry, and seeing a distant fig tree, it was in leaf. In other words, it had leaves on it but there was no fruit. So Jesus went out to find out if that tree had any fruit. And when he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Now I looked this up, figs are in season in like summer, like June or July, all the way till the fall, like September, October. Um, that's the season for figs. 
And so Jesus does something crazy. So Jesus looks at the tree and he actually speaks to the tree and he curses this tree. And he says, may no one ever eat from you again. <laughs> he was like, you're not going to feed me? I'm going to curse you. That's, it's just crazy. <laughs> it looks like. And the disciples heard him say that. And then what ends up happening, Jesus continues on his journey. His disciples, they go into the city of Jerusalem. All four gospels give the accounts uh, or different variations of it. But Jesus goes into the temple area. He sees that there's money changers and they're making profits selling animals for the festival of Passover. Mm -hmm. All of these families would come from all over the world and they would purchase animals. animals yeah. And you, it was against the law to set up uh, uh, the merchant shops and tables in the temple courtyard area, which is exactly what all of these merchants were doing. Jesus goes in and he flips over the tables. We were just sharing the story with our boys this morning. He flips it over, he's, he's driving them out, and it says in Mark here that he overturned the tables and the money changers and the benches that were selling doves, and he would not allow anyone to carry any merchandise through the temple So he's just courts. standing at the door with his homemade with. Just keeping people He's out like, of the temple. You, you don't want to come in. This is not where you want to be. He's like keeping all these people out with this homemade whip that he went and made. Yep. So interesting. And Jesus said, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but so you good. have made it a den of robbers. So, good. so this is what happened on this day mm. where Jesus spent basically the entire day sitting up in the temple courtyard area, um, keeping people, merchants from coming in with their merchandise and driving them out. And he was challenged by the Pharisees and the religious leaders. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus being our Passover lamb, every Passover lamb had to be perfect. Yeah. If you read Exodus chapter 12, it gives a list of requirements for the Passover lamb. It has to be a year old. It can't have any broken bones. There can be no spot or blemish, mm -hmm. no wrinkle. All of these things are things that Jesus had to fulfill as our Passover lamb. So for the next three days, tomorrow, the next day, mm -hmm. all the way until Wednesday, you see in Matthew, you see all these questions that the religious leaders try to trip Jesus up on. Yeah. They ask him questions about the law. They ask him about divorce. They ask him about what the greatest commandment is. They're asking these difficult questions, trying to trip up Jesus's theology and Jesus answers with wisdom and grace on every question until at the very end the Pharisees said they dare not ask any more questions and so that leads up to where they were inspecting the Passover lamb Jesus mm -hmm. and then on the 14th day of Nisan which was Wednesday which is Wednesday this week which is also when Passover is in April 2020 on that Wednesday Jesus was crucified mm -hmm. and by 3 p.m. that afternoon he breathed his last he said it is finished he gave up his spirit and he died at the same time that the Passover lamb was being sacrificed mm -hmm. and slaughtered in the temple courtyard area Jesus was our Passover lamb and so we'll talk through some of those as we mm -hmm. go on but that's day two and I just wanted to focus on just this idea that Jesus, during this Passion Week, he only, he only performed two miracles. And we mentioned one of the them. The fig tree. The fig tree is the other one. Do you know, do you know what the other one was? We, I guess we talked about it this morning. Um, yeah. Does anybody else know? Let's see if we get any, uh, any Wait, answers see if here. Anybody knows. What, is, what is the other miracle? Jesus did two miracles during the Passion Week. What was the other miracle that Jesus performed during the, the Passion <laughs> Week? This I'm is giving, before Jesus died on the cross. I'm giving him a <laughs> An idea. She, she's giving a hint. I'm giving you a hint. <laughs> so Jesus <laughs> healed the ear of the servant. Remember when Malchus, Jesus, uh, or Peter chopped off Malchus's ear and Jesus put it back on. So that was the other miracle that Jesus did. But on this day, Jesus chose to use an ordinary object, the fig tree, mm -hmm. as a faith lesson for us. Mm -hmm. And there's something interesting that Jesus says. Um, when you guys... When you look at Mark chapter 11, jump ahead to a couple of the, the verses just a little bit later. And we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at Jesus and what he says about the fig tree and what it relates to us as believers when it comes to faith. Here it is. And so Jesus says this. Which, where is this? Mark 11. This is Mark, uh, 11, 22. 22. Okay. Jesus says, have faith in God. And I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, 
but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. And Mark eleven twenty four 24 is such a powerful oh, scripture. We need to memorize this scripture. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, I tell you, this is Jesus. This is the red letters. Jesus quoting himself. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it in your heart mm -hmm. and it will be yours. Believe that you've received it. It's already yep. been given to you. It's already yours. So faith is this idea Hebrews 11 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for it's the evidence of things not seen and when we have faith in our hearts when we ask God for something in prayer we believe in our hearts that we've already received it and Carrie and I were just sitting through today talking through yeah what that looks like when you have faith for something you're literally taking God's word says here's the reality of what I have here's offered what you, you. Yeah, that's right. Here, here's, here's the reality you. of what's available to what's you available? in Christ Jesus in the spirit realm. And you may not possess it in the physical, natural realm, mm -hmm. but in the spirit, it's already settled. Yeah. Isaiah 53 says, by your stripes, we are healed. And then Peter says later, referencing that scripture, that we have been healed past tense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's already been done. That's right. But so many of us might carry wounds and right. disease or sickness in our body. Right. But the promise of God's word says that we it's are healed. Still, the promise of God's word is still the truth. And we can't bend the truth of God's word based on our personal experiences and what we yeah. believe to be the truth based on what has happened to us. Because God's word is still the word and his word still is the truth. And... Once we start basing it on our personal experiences mm. and what we've been through, then all of a sudden we start to question if it's really truth and if this is really real. Yeah. And is it really true what you just read in Mark? Yeah, therefore I tell you. Whatever you ask in believe, prayer, believe, believe you that you it. have received it and it will be yours. Yeah. And so I was telling David to, today we were talking and we had a long conversation this morning. It was really nice. Yeah. Um, but I was talking to him about, and he already knows this, but um, some of you might be able to relate with this. I have woken up in the last two or three months. I get, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and um, this, this great amount of fear and anxiety or you know, sometimes you like wake up panic attacks. almost like a panic attack and you feel, um, I just feel like I don't want to move. And, um, this it happened is, last night. It right? happened last night. So this is a real vulnerable moment here. Um, I, it happened again last night and I had told David before when this has happened, I will wake up the next day uh, using my prayer language just out of nowhere. I'll wake up and that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I, have prayed through this and I be, I'm not receiving that as mine. I don't believe it is my fear. I don't believe it is my anxiety because I know that he already paid the price for those things to be settled. And so they are not mine and, and I don't own those. Those don't belong to me just like they don't belong to you. If you are experiencing those things, do not receive them as your own because they are not yours. That's good. Um, but I, and I was telling him, I, I feel like I haven't fully experienced that breakthrough yet, but mm. I'm making the choice to stand on God's word and the promises that he tells me in his word, just like he did Jericho when yep. he said, I have given you the city, yep. but the walls hadn't come down and they hadn't even begun walking yet. Yep. But he says, I've given you the city. I mean, the walls are still erected. They're still up, but he says, I have given you. As in it's already been done. As in already receive it. And Abraham, the same, the same thing. I will, um, I've made you a father of many nations. And he didn't have one child. Yep. He had no children All yet. All he had was the promise. Isaac had not been born. But he had the born. promise and he was believing the truth of what God said to him. And that's the same truth that I stand on and that you can stand on when these things happen. If they ever happen yeah. to you. That I don't receive that it is not mine. It is not my fear. It is not my anxiety. Those things were paid for a long time ago. That's so good. I um I think this is just an encouraging word as we begin to wrap this up. We're gonna sing the song Waymaker. It's yeah. a really it's kind of become a theme during this coronavirus. And mm. um I love the videos we saw where the cars were in the hospital parking lot That's and playing so this song. Um for us I to recognize that. God as our waymaker 
our promise mm. keeper, our miracle worker. Yes. He is the one that performs the miracles and we are the ones that come to him with faith in our hearts. And we have to have this settledness knowing that God is good and he wants us to be healed right. and whole. And we have to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, it has to be something that's a conviction that we will never let go of. Not with a but if attached to it, but the yeah, if but. this happens, yeah, but if this happens, with nothing attached, understanding and believing in your heart that what he says in his word is truth no matter what. And that's a hard truth, I think, for a lot of it people to understand because... Because we want to reconcile with, in our human yeah. minds, right? We want to be able to reconcile what that looks yep. like. Because scripture is clear. I mean, scripture says, like Isaiah 53 says, by his stripes we are, are healed. healed. Now, I can pray, David or Carrie, I can lay hands on a hundred sick people and they, are, they could all have cancer and not one of them gets healed and all hundred of them die, let's say. It does not change the fact that God's word says by his stripes we are healed. God's word is true regardless of our experience right. and we cannot we bend, bend God's it. word around our experience to make ourselves feel better. And so we have to stand and meditate right. and if we don't see the results, if we don't possess it like Abraham in that moment where we have a promise but Isaac isn't born yet. We get in our prayer closet, we get on our face and say, God, whatever's lacking in yeah. my heart, whatever's lacking in my life, would you let me become more and more like Christ? That's right. And either way, I still choose to believe what you say. We are, I'm still making that choice. Yeah, because we are growing up into Christ. And none of us have arrived. Even Paul, the Apostle Paul said, I have not yet arrived. And so all of us are growing up into these things as we're growing in our faith from glory to glory and God's word doesn't change. And if we don't see the breakthrough, we go back again and we say, God, please, yes. Lord. And it's not even a begging thing. It's a place of faith. It's a settled assurance. It's saying, God, you are true. Your That's word right. is true regardless of what I see. And it's, That's right. it's the it's, substance of things not That's, seen. that's right. And we're praying from a place of victory. Yes because it's already been done. It's already been settled. So let's let's close with these scriptures. Jesus said that if you when you come to him in prayer, that you believe in your heart, that you believe that it has been done. Yes. And it will be yours. Yes. And he's give, he gives these open-ended promises all over scripture. Another one in uh, John 15 Verse 7, Jesus says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, I mean, catch this. Jesus says, Ask whatever you, you wish. <laughs> and what? And, and it will it be will given be. to you. <laughs> that is, I mean, there's no caveat. That's a good stuff. <laughs> Jesus says, If you remain in me, my words remain in you, ask, ask whatever what you, you wish, ask and it will be want. given to you. Matthew 17, this is a completely separate circumstance. This is Jesus coming off of the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And he comes down and the disciples couldn't cast out the demon out of the boy. And they asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast the demon out? Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, we have to have faith. And then he says, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can actually say to the mountain, move from here to there. Yeah. And it will move. Yes. Nothing will be impossible for you. Yeah. Jesus tells us to speak to mountains. And we have an authority in Christ to, we, to where we actually speak toward an illness, yeah. toward a mountain. And we don't beg and plead. We don't say, God, please, would you help us with this thing? We, ha we have to have a, a place of revelation That's where right. we understand and say, God, you've called us just, into this. Just like when that happens at night, um, I speak directly to fear and I command that it leave yeah. in the name of Jesus. Because I know that that is not from the Lord. I know that is not what he has for me. So if it's not from him and it's not of him, then it's from the enemy. Yeah, so I speak directly to it and tell it, you must leave in the name of Jesus by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. That's good. So we're going to sing this song, Miracle Worker or Waymaker. Waymaker. So we're going to move over here. And uh, we want you guys to enter in with us as we, uh, as we do worship. And babe, would you uh, would you open us in prayer? It, yes. Just that God would be our miracle worker, our way yes. maker. That if we are struggling with yes. faith or fear or anxiety, yes. just break that yes. off of anyone watching on this yes. video. Lord, we just thank you that you are the way maker. 
you are the miracle worker. Lord, you, you worked miracles way back when in the Bible, and you still do them today, Father. Yes. I know that sometimes fear creeps in, and the what ifs, and the uh, buts, and the, you know, what if, what if. But Lord, your truth still stands today, just like it did before, Father. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we speak from a place of victory, knowing that you paid it all so that yes. we can be healed, so that we can be whole, Lord, so that we can come to you with anything. Jesus. You make a way for us when there seems to be no way. You are our way maker. You are our miracle worker. And if there's anyone out there, Lord, that needs a miracle tonight, I just speak that over them and pray, Father, that they would get the miracle that they are needing, Lord. If there's anyone that needs healing tonight, Father, I pray that your healing power would flow yes, over them from head to toe, yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Back pain, you must leave in the name of Jesus. Yes. Headaches, you must leave yes. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Foot pain, you must leave in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you cover a multitude of sins, but not just sins, Lord. You cover any and all ailments that we may have, Lord. Thank you, God, and anybody that is feeling like they have chains on them. I just, uh, I keep seeing chains. I pray that those chains are broken yes, off in the name right of now, Jesus. Jesus. Whatever those chains are, I pray they are loosed in the name of Jesus. And that there would be freedom. I speak freedom. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you free us. We are free in you, Lord. Thank you that we can ask, Lord, and it shall be done according to your word. Yes, thank you, We Jesus. love you. We stand on your truth. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, guys, join in with us. We're going to sing together. Thank Just you, Just lift Lord. up the Lord. Jesus.
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, that is who you are, and 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 that is who you are. about who you are and how you operate. I just hear Romans 12 too in my spirit that we're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can test and approve God's perfect will. Lord, would you reveal your will? Your will is the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. If we see Jesus, we see how the Father is. If we want to understand the ways of God, we look at the person of Jesus. Yes, Lord. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you would bring a fresh revelation of the person of Jesus Christ for everyone that's watching this video tonight. Jesus, as you approached the city of Jerusalem, you knew what you were walking into. But fear never seized your heart. You even had the ability to call down angels from heaven to rescue you off the cross, but you chose not to. You chose to die a sinner's death so that we might be made alive in you, that we could take on your life. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. You're a good father. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are. Father, we ask for a release of miracles, a release of faith. Lord, in the body of Christ, there would just be a, a elevation in our expectation of who you are and how you operate on the earth and how we operate through you. I pray for a holy boldness to begin to rise up in the church of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Every believer, every Christian Make would hear the mandate of heaven to be uh, ambassadors of reconciliation, to be representatives of Jesus Christ. Make us bold, Lord. 
Lord, that it would be difficult for us to walk past somebody in a wheelchair. Oh, Lord, would you rise us up? Would you stir our faith to the point where we feel like we can step into a grocery store, a gas station, and we can ask somebody to pray for them. And we would have faith and believe in our hearts that what we ask for, it will be given to us. I feel like sometimes when we're on these Facebook Live videos, there's this tendency to just kind of rush off. But wherever you are, God wants to actually have an encounter with you right now in this moment. If you're willing, we don't even do this in church. If we were sitting in church, a lot of times we're so quick to just leave and go to lunch. But I would encourage you just for these next couple of moments, if you're seated in a chair, wherever you're at, just make yourself comfortable. Close your eyes and just whisper a prayer to the Holy Spirit. He is the comforter. He's the counselor. He reveals Jesus. And, and say a prayer to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, what do you want to reveal to me tonight? What do you want to reveal about the nature of God? How you operate and how I operate through you. Lord, would you give me a revelation of faith tonight? The faith of God. Yes. Not our own faith. Give us a revelation of what faith is. Grabbing a hold of the reality of something that's in heavenly places and pulling it here on earth. Thank you, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. It's good church. Hey, we love connecting with you guys on Facebook Live. And we're going to do this again tomorrow. So we'll do this every day leading up to Resurrection Sunday. I love it. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. My wife was complaining that 9 o'clock is too late for us. It's so late, you guys. So we might try 8.30. <laughs> I'll post something. We'll see. Is it late? It's 9 o'clock late. It is kind of late. <laughs> Jackie says amen. I don't know. That I, I, I think that. that's late. I don't, think she, I don't know. She's oh, she said Eastern amen time. because, yeah, she's she on Lisa, Eastern time. Lisa's on, they're on, no, they're on Central time. It all determines, it all depends on how, how late our kids get in the bed. So that's. We I'll try just, to get them in at like, 30. What time do your kids go to bed? Like our neighbors, they were like, I, I cannot believe you guys get your kids in bed. Our kids are in bed by like 730, <laughs> which apparently is a miracle for most families. Um, that's what we aim for, but, uh, we love to, <laughs> Teresa, your Teresa eats dinner at like 11 o'clock. We her. called Teresa and she was making steak at like 11 PM for her family. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Jen says it's perfect. Nine o'clock is perfect. Nine, Nine is, is great. great. Stephanie that's said awesome. it was great. Uh, okay. Teresa wants 3 AM. She says, Hey, let's get together at 3 AM. <laughs> Millie's awake trying Try to, to draw. <laughs> Put that girl to Hi, bed. Millie. Put that girl to bed. I mean, come on. Hi, Millie. Jeez. And to Carrie saying hi. I love oh, her. Oh, man. That's awesome. All right. Well, we love you guys. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. I guess I guess 9 o'clock is when we'll just keep we'll it going. We'll just keep it going. We'll just keep going. See you all tomorrow. Night night. I'm the only oldie here, I guess. I don't know. All right. Love you guys. All God right. bless you.